Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. And this, in this video, we are going to be playing the dungeon that I've been, that I've been complaining about for pretty much the entire, like, playthrough. I mean, I think I've been complaining about this one since the first part. I mean, I can't, I didn't check to be sure, but I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, the dungeon where you need to walk through the fucking wall. I will never get over this. It is so fucking stupid. Okay. So I don't remember exactly where you need to do it, but I do remember it was on the right side. So every time we go, we, we uh, hit a wall on the right side, we're gonna have to jump and make sure that you cannot go gonna have to jump in and make sure that we can't go um, up or can't go uh, past it and we're gonna have to go back just to get the fucking key or I don't can, could we even get that with the regular jump spell I have no idea um, anyway the first time I tried to record this uh, my computer lagged which was um, Unfortunate. What I mean by that, it lagged at the start of the recording, so I just kind of stopped. Um, attempt 2 was pretty smooth, though, so hopefully the rest of the video is going to be smooth. Um, do you think I... Okay, I'll grind. Well, I'm not going to grind, because I don't think grinding is really that required in this game. But I'll get, like, a third one of these, and maybe a fourth if, the, if it uh, comes up. It doesn't. Okay. So, uh, if you heard the news... <laughs> if you heard the news, I suck at this game. Uh, well, if you heard the news, uh, the UN did finally pass a, uh, ceasefire resolution, which... I mean, obviously that's a good thing. But it's kind of hard to be happy about it. I mean... Because, like, how many Palestinian people needed to die before they finally did that? Like, it feels like, like so many, like, tens of thousands of them have died. It's kind of hard to feel happy about it. It just feels way too late. Better late than never, obviously, but I don't know. I mean, we're not t just talking about, like people dying. We're talking about entire families, entire generations, entire pieces of culture just being erased and destro d destroyed. Like, is that something to be happy about? I mean... Well, yeah, I think I made my point on it. I am not good at this right, right now. Um. See, so yeah, that's what I... I mean, I don't really have much to say about it other than that. Um. Uh, my other... Fuck, what else was I gonna talk about? Um. Maybe I had a list. Did I, I didn't have a list plan this time either. Okay. Let's do a shield. Fuck. Give me the fucking key. There we go, that's what I needed. Okay. Shit, I didn't have anything else I wanted to talk about aside from that, but it's, I mean, it's just a horrible, it's just a horrible thing altogether. I don't really think, I don't think I can vote for Biden in good conscience, in good conscience with, uh, 
his actions in supporting that, like, for six months. I was already kind of struggling with seeing if I would support Biden to begin with. I mean, well, not support him, but vote for him. I mean, I was sort of leaning towards maybe, like, towards the end of, tw well, towards, like, August of 2023, I was leaning towards maybe, but, I mean, now, I just, now it's definitely going to be a no. I just, not in good conscience. So, I guess on a brighter note, um, fuck. Well, well, on a brighter note, I might, I've, I talked about total drama on Twitter a bit, so I might as well talk about it here. I mean, why not? Um, So I think what my, I think, partially unpopular opinion was that I actually thought that uh, Pocketail Island was one of the better seasons of the show. Um, and when I say that, I'm not, it's not even really good. Fuck. It's a fucking trick. I, I don't think it's good, but I think... Compared to the previous few seasons, well, really just All-Stars, it was more tolerable. Like, at the very least, I don't, at the very, at the very least, I just don't understand people who think it's, who think it's worse than All-Stars. I mean, it's, I mean, it's clearly better. I mean, All-Stars is definitely, like, easily the worst season of the show. I mean, I guess, technically, Pocketail Island and, um, all-Stars are both combined into one season, like, they're both season five. But, I mean, functionally, Palkatail Island is a different season. Man, that was really satisfying. Um, I think what really, I think what bothered me about Pocktail Island was the characters were just too gimmicky. Like, um... Like, um... They were too... Either they were gimmicky or they weren't used very well. Like, something that kind of did annoy me with Revenge and, um... Pocktail Island was the tendency to make their, um, I don't, I need a key. The tendency to make, like, the first eliminated, like, the person who gets eliminated first, like, being such a huge, like, gimmick. Um, and that was sort of my problem with, uh, Beardo. It's just, I mean, when you look at Ezekiel in Total Drama Island, like, yeah, he was obviously filler just to be eliminated first, but, like, it wasn't, like, but he wasn't, like, entirely just a gag character. Like, like, he actually did have, um... Oh, I don't, I don't have, I don't have fucking magic. Like, he wasn't just entirely a gag character. Like, he wasn't just, like, entirely devoted to one gag. He had, he was still a stereotype, just like the rest of the characters. Sort of like a redneck home, uh, homeschool guy. Um... But with Stacy and Beardo, it's just, they're obviously just gimmick characters because they needed somebody to get eliminated first. And none of their gimmicks are very good. I think Stacy is just a very insufferable uh, gimmick character. And it just feels a little, I'm not going to say it feels insulting, but it does feel sort of like, but it does feel... It does feel like they, like they could have done, done a lot better, I guess I should say. I still have key. Um, like, Beardo's whole, like, beatboxing thing wasn't very funny. Um, Leonard is a character that I just thought was extremely annoying. I didn't find his, like, him thinking he was a wizard to be charming at all. I didn't think, I didn't think they were, I don't think they were even really clever with it. 
at all. And thankfully, he was only in two episodes, but for some reason, they put him in the Redonculus race. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why they put him there. It's, it's like, out of every character, they could have chosen. Hell, out of every character from Pocketail Island, they could have gone with. They went with Leonard. It's fucking insane to me. And, if, and he was eliminated first. Thank God. Because Leonard is nothing more than a joke character. Um... As for Amy and Sammy, it's just... I don't want to, like, rip off Mr. Enter too much, especially because Mr. Enter is, like, you know, sucks. But, I mean, I guess he was right. I remember his video on Total Drama. He was right that Revenge of the Island and Cocktail Island, they they just, like, the concepts of their characters were just way too outlandish, outlandish and cartoony. Like, with, with Amy and Sammy, it's just, oh, it's the evil twin trope. Like, really? And, like, they don't really do anything with it, because they're, like, so... I mean, I did kind of like that Jasmine and Sammy had, like, a friendship, but that was not... That was only... That really wasn't focused on enough. I think it should have been focused on a bit more. Um, and the same... And the same goes for some characters in Revenge of the Island, too. Like, um, Mike's whole multiple personality disorder thing just felt like... It just felt like they were sort of out of ideas for interesting characters. And, oh, I, I can go there. Just felt like they were out of ideas for interesting characters, and so they just went with like just some outlandish concepts. Um, how does Mike's multiple personalities sort of work within the total drama universe? Because the way it's portrayed, it's it's like a virus takes control of his body, and he just doesn't he can't control it. Like, which, I mean, is that? Is that, is that how it works in real life? Pro I, I, don't, I imagine that's not how it works in real life. Um, <clears throat> and again, it just kind of bothers me all the one-note characters. I think Rodney is a very annoying one-note character whose only joke is that he's in love with like with three different of the girls on the, sh on the show. It just It's not charming. It's not funny. It's just... It feels like a waste. It feels... I think... But yeah, I think I've gone through... I think if there's any other characters I think were not very good. Um, obviously Dave. I, I don't know what the fuck they... I, do, I don't know what the fuck they did with Dave. Like, I don't know what the fuck they were trying to go for with him. Like, I feel like they wanted to do... Like, they didn't want to do Mike and Zoe again. Like, they wanted to do something a little different, which I do commend them for that. But honestly, they did not do it. But honestly, whatever they were trying to do, they did not do well at all. Like, having Dave in the last episode try to kill Sky is just... What the... What are we even doing here, man? Like... Like, is, is he supposed to be unlikable? Is he supposed to... Are we supposed to hate him? Because... I mean, you're not really doing a very good job. Because the show didn't really do a good job of that. I mean, because it just made him completely obsessed with Sky. Like, didn't even give him any other character traits. Which really, which is what really bugged me. I mean, at least towards the end of the show. Like, I have no idea what they were trying to go for with him, but they, it did not work. Um, yeah. I think some of the character ideas are interesting, at least. I think the idea of some, like a kid, like Topher's character idea, just being so obsessed with Chris and wanting to be Chris is, I think it's a, a neat idea, but like, but I, I don't think like making him obsessed, but even then, that sort of, wasn't that just kind of Sierra in World Tour? Wasn't that what she was about? I mean, to be fair, I guess they do take it in a different direction. I think what they should have done was just make Topher, like, obsessed with... Oh, this is the boss. I can't go here. Um, they should have just made him, like, obsessed with fame in general and just wanting to be famous. I think that would have been a better direction than just making him... They Just making him obsessed with Chris. I think it would have been better. Um, uh... Okay, I need to, um, I don't think I checked down here. Am I gonna get that fucking pee bag or I'm just gonna fucking it?
Yeah, let's just ignore it. Um. Anyway, I think what made um, Pocket Tail Island one of the better seasons. I mean, other than the fact that it's really only better than like Actions and All Stars, like definitively, is because I think one thing I did like is that they did ditch the whole like main se season antagonist. I mean, almost every season before that. I guess except maybe Action, but even Action kind of had one, was having a main series villain. And I think that idea just kind of got played out by that point, and I do respect them for... I do respect Cocktail Island for just ditching the concept entirely and trying something different. Because there isn't really a main antagonist. I mean, Sugar kind of is, but she's more just like an asshole. Like, she's more just like an asshole, not like actually like a villain. So that was one of the that was one of the things I do I did like about it, and I also liked that the characters actually needed to try to you know find their own food and build their own shelters because it made it more like Survivor, you know, the show that Total Drama was parodying in the first place. I thought I I liked that. Um, some of the challenges were pretty neat. I actually really liked the episode where Scarlet tries to kill everyone. Um, a lot of I think Scarlet's big turn was. I think it was neat. I, 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 I was, obviously it was pretty, I mean, it was predictable, but I do like that the villain did, I mean, well, not villain, but the show, the season did have characters who fulfilled antagonistic roles, but didn't have like a, like a main villain. Like, I think that's something that the season, that's something I really liked about it. Um, like, cause Scarlet wasn't a total drama villain in like the traditional sense. I guess Dave could also be seen as a villain, but again, there isn't really, like, a villain in Pucktail Island. Is this it? Is this the one? Okay, this isn't it. <laughs> um, those were the main things I liked about uh, Pucktail Island. Um, the new, again, like, the third generation cast was very mixed, but I think overall they were, and overall, I honestly think they were a bit more negative on the lower side of mixed. But I think, I think there were a few things that did save it for me. Um, so if I were to, um... But I think what I, 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 and I've said this many times on Twitter before, but I think, but my, I've said that, like, my second least favorite season aside from All Stars is Action. And that's because Total Drama Action feels like a rehash of Island and doesn't really add enough, of, like, of, doesn't really have enough of its own identity. And part of that is I don't think the movie gimmick was really implemented well. Some of the challenges are interesting, but, like, they don't really, but, like, the movie gimmick doesn't really add anything to this doesn't really add much like compared to world poor where the um the gimmick of going around the world every episode taking place in a new location like i think that actually added something to the challenges and something to the um and something to the season but but like the movie gimmick in action just didn't feel like it added anything and also i don't think the pacing was very good like it feels like action is too slow like there aren't enough like they like it like, there's too many episodes for how, for, like, the cast of characters that they have. And it's weird because, like, World Tour has basically the same amount of character, has almost the same amount of characters as action, but, like, it doesn't really have the problem where it feels like it's going too slow because, because the pacing of World Tour is just a lot better. Like, it feels like it's, like, things are actually, like, the, like, the main story is actually progressing, whereas action, everything is too slow, and a lot of the characters aren't very good. Um, yeah, it's just not, it's just not a good season. I, it's def, it's my second least favorite behind All Stars, because of just how, just because of how slow it is, and it doesn't really seem like it has too much enough of its own idea. Um, 
But yes, All Stars is definitely the worst. I, I think that's definitely the main, like the popular opinion is that All Stars is the worst season. And they're right. That they are right. It is bad. It is so, so bad. I think I've already been here. Yeah, I think this is the beginning, but should I, like, waste time just to be sure? I mean, I wait- I mean, fuck it, it's my video, we're wasting time. I mean, All Stars just makes so many baffling decisions, like, it's so much worse than any other season, and it's not even close. I guess the first thing in All-Star is that the challenges don't, like, the challenges are supposedly, like, revamps of, like, challenges from, um, the previous seasons, but, like, they don't, but they feel, like, so, they kind of feel dumbed down to the point where they don't, they don't feel like the same challenge at all. Um, I don't, not, the chemistry, but the chemistry between the old and new cast was horrible. Like, it doesn't feel like they had enough interactions in between generations. Um, also, I mean, first off, Sam had no business being in the season. He is not an all-star. Like, he... Like, even... Like, I find it weird that Owen isn't in the season, despite Owen's voice actor having been available. I mean, I'm sure he was available. Like, they just didn't, but they still didn't have him in the season, which is really weird. Um, uh, I didn't like the, um... Yeah, and if they wanted, like, another character from Revenge of the Island, um, they could have at least chosen someone who felt more like an all-star. Like, Brick would have felt more like an all-star because he was, like, a fan favorite and he even got further in that season than Sam. I mean, hell, even Dawn would have made more sense. At least, like, she's a fan favorite, which makes her more of an all-star than a character who didn't make it to the merge in their own introductory season and is not a fan and isn't really liked by the fan base that much. So that was... So he had no business being there. The character... Though, to be fair, maybe it is for the best that Brick wasn't in this season because of how, you know, bad it is. I, something that always bugged me is just how infantile the writing felt. Like, it felt like the season was so dumbed down. Like, the writing was awful. The, the writing was awful and predictable. The characters felt extremely stupid. And it felt like the show was trying way too hard to... Like, it felt like it was rushed. Okay, that's not good. It just felt dumb now. Like, like enough of the original, like... Like, even... Even Revenge of the Island felt like it had more depth in its, like, um, challenges and character interactions than, like, All Stars did. Like, in All Stars, it's just the simplest of conflicts. And Mal is the worst storyline this show had ever done. What really fuck, what really bugs me about Mal is that when you look at what he does in the season, literally all he does is break shit. <laughs> like, he just breaks random objects, and the show acts like he's such an evil mastermind. Like, he's not. Like, what is his plan for winning the game? Like, because, like... Because, like, if you remember, like, Alejandro from World Tour, like, he could actually play the game very well. He wasn't just, like, breaking random objects and thinking, oh, man, I'm so bad. Like, like, oh, man, I am so bad. I guess this is also when, like, it becomes confusing how exactly Mike's personnel. I mean, it was always confusing, but this becomes really... I, should, I really need to use the jump power up. It starts to become really confusing just how Mike's multiple personality sort of works within the Total Drama universe. And that's why I said that it it's portrayed like a virus takes over his body, like has infected his body, and he just can't control it. Like, at all. It's like someone has possessed his body, essentially. It's very strange. But... 
Like, it's just the worst... It is the worst thing I've seen via Mal storyline. Okay, where the hell am I supposed to go? Am I missing something? Probably somewhere around here, if I can just remember where the hell it is. Oh, that was something... Oh, something else that really bugged me about All-Star is how it made all the characters seem like idiots. Like... Like, how nobody realizes anything is... Nobody thinks that anything is wrong with Mike, despite the fact that he's acting extremely weird and evil throughout the entire season. Like, I mean, even Cameron, who was able to figure out that Mike had multiple personality disorder by himself just by watching him in season four, never thinks that anything might be wrong with him. It is the most ridiculous shit I've seen, ever. I don't like that Mike won the season because he didn't fucking do anything. I mean, depending on who... Depending on which version you watch, it was either Mike or Zoe who won the season. Okay, is it here? No. Like, he didn't do anything. Like, literally the entire season, he did fucking nothing. He didn't deserve to win. Worst winner ever. I swear. I guess that was what... I guess that's part of my All-Stars rant. I could talk about a lot more how none of the characters really act like themselves at all. How... How some... How the writing... How sometimes it feels like the writers just didn't have any idea what they wanted to do with the characters. But I think I've made... I think I've made my point. It's a pretty... It's an awful season... It's an awful season. Um, it's very... It's easily the worst of the entire show. It's not even close. Like, none of the other seasons are even close to being as bad as it. Okay. So I'm going to go here, and I think... It has to be here, right? So, what, so, okay, so I talked about action in All-Stars, I guess I should end the pocket tale, I might as well talk about, um, revenge, yeah, revenge, um, it's okay, I, I think what sort of bothered me about Revenge of the Island was, um, first off, I don't think the, um, whole, Mute, like toxic waste theme. The toxic waste theme is sort of, it's interesting, I guess, on paper, but it didn't really add much to the, it didn't really add much to the season when you really thought about it. Um, I guess other things that bought, I guess some other things that bothered me was just Scott in general. I think he's not, I think Scott is probably the second worst villain in the show. Okay, so it's not there. I think maybe I need to go down again. And the reason I think that is because the strategy is, well, stupid. Like, I mean, why, why would you, why would you sabotage your own team? Like, that's his only strategy. And like, the, what he says is that he wants to get like, but even that wouldn't be, like, my biggest problem with him. My biggest problem with him is that it just seems like, is that it just makes the other characters act, like, really stupid. 
Like, because Scott is so obviously shady. Like, Scott is so... I mean, I remember Defopolizer saying this in his video, which I watched, of his ranking typical drama seasons. It's just... He seems so obviously shady, and no one ever suspects him of anything. I think Don and B's eliminations were really stupid with how they played out, because with B, Scott just tells his entire team, yeah, B said all these really mean things, and they just believe it. <laughs> no questions asked, just fucking believe, fucking believe him. Okay, I definitely haven't been here before, thank god. I feel like I've been wandering in circles this entire time, I'm so sorry. Hopefully me writing about Toku Drama was, was entertaining enough. But yeah, and with Dawn, he just says, oh yeah, that, that, that bag, that she stole everyone's things, it was definitely her, because I said it. I, it's definitely her, because I said, because I said it was. You better believe it, you better believe it. And they just, and again, they just believe it. Like, it just makes everyone out to be an idiot. That's like the thing I hate, that's the thing that bothered me the most about Sky. Yeah, here it is. I think this is where the item is. At least if I remember correctly. No, I think it's down here. Yeah, I think so. Other than Scott, and I think I'm... Oh, fuck. Other than Scott, and I think I mentioned Stacy being, like, sort of an annoying, like, gimmick character just be just to be booted off i think i i think i actually i think i actually liked most of the characters um i mean scott was not a good primary antagonist but um but joe was a good but joe was a good sort joe and lightning were sort of good at, like other like secondary antagonists i think joe especially because i think like I, I kind of like her. Ri I I did like her rivalry rivalry with Brick and, and that one episode where Cameron is able to uh like able to like double cross her. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I, I liked her. I liked how she was written. Um, Lightning. I don't know. I, I don't know how to feel about Lightning at all. Um, part of me thinks he's really annoying. I think what sort of bothers me is that in the last few episodes after Scott, they turn Lightning into an antagonist because they think it needs the the show. The season still needs an antagonist. I don't know why. It it didn't need an like the series does not need. Like we're already pretty late into the show. We don't need an antagonist at this point. But like the season said otherwise. I have seen some people talk about um, Scott's strategy in Revenge of the Island, saying he's supposed to be based off a Survivor contestant named Russell Hans. And I have seen, and like, I, I guess what sort of bugs me about that is like, I mean, Survivor has more than one immunity item. Like Russell found like I don't I don't know, is it like three? But yeah, like the pair like the show like Total Drama, like the, obviously like not an actual reality show first of all, but. Um, like, there's only one immunity item, so it's sort of difficult to... And Scott only had one. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. And that's what really bugged me. That's what really bugged That's what really ended up bugging me. Because he only got one in the entire season, and it just, it just felt forced. I didn't like it. Like, I think maybe the idea of a character who constantly makes their team lose as like a villain strategy could work, but I don't like the way they took it. Is there a key here? Or do I need to go back and find one? Shit. Dude, I am sucking right now. Where the hell is the key? I, I guess that was my, my big problem, Scott, is that for the first half of the season, it just makes everyone else be an idiot. Um, I 
But yeah, that's my whole rant on Total Drama. I still have a key, I need a fucking fire one. Um... I think, I think the best, I, I remember on Twitter I said the best, or on Twitter I said the best seasons were Island and World Tour, which are pretty much the common consensus. I mean, I think Island's better than World Tour, but I mean, I think World Tour is pretty good too. I think World Tour is really saved by, I think World Tour is really like, oh, it was right here the entire fucking time, my god. This is what I get for being a fucking idiot. Oh, that's just great. This is what you get. I think World Tour is really carried hard by the uh, songs and the uh, setting. But they are really good. And Alejandro was a really good foil for Heather. I just, I liked what they did with Heather this season. It was, the last three episodes of the show, of World Tour were great. Just, just good. Good season. And I think, I think, I think it and Island are the peak of the show. I think Island, again, I think Island is still the best season, but World Tour is definitely second. So that was my whole rant on Total Drama. I think that I talked about it for like a long time in this video. But I mean, I guess there's a lot to talk about with Total Drama. Um, I mean, the reboot coming along. I have, I, I have not watched the reboot season. I don't know if it's good at all. I mean, I can't, I, I can't imagine how it could possibly be worse than like All Stars, but I mean, who knows? I don't know why I like doing this. It just feels good. Alright. Finally, let's get that fucking item. And this is what... This is what my viewers love seeing. Me being an idiot. Okay, I feel like I should probably get a level up. Before I end the dungeon. Um, because I only need 1,200 more, more points to get one. Die. And this is the recorder that we use literally once in the entire game to get rid of like something like blocking the next area, which is amazing. Good. Now we can get to the boss, but first I'm gonna have to do some, I wanna do some grinding to get up to a thousand points and then we can like just basically sort of skip the next level. Well, not technically skip it, but we'll, it'll be covered by the, um... It'll be covered by the, uh, beating the boss. Okay, hold on. Okay, wait. Pass. I'm gonna try to kill these guys, and then we're done. Maybe it's not the best idea to fight them here. Man, come on, you bastard. Come over here. Come on, you bastard. 200 points. There we go. I need it. things you need to like basically know where they're gonna be like before you even hit before you even try to attack or else you're gonna get fucked oh, oh there we go that that's what i'm talking about okay i need another one give me another one It was right there. It feels like a lot of luck. Ah. Oh. 
shit. Um, you know what I also said on Twitter? I said that um, I feel like everything I need to introduce everything I talk about this with. You know, I said this on Twitter, which I mean is probably a pretty shitty way to introduce everything. But um, I said that um, I think the first real video I'd make in a long time would be why a certain song is the worst psychedelia song in the 60s. And, I mean, that's a pretty, like, extreme title, um, obviously. Like, worst psychedelia song of the 60s. I mean... Oh, fuck. I mean, that's a, I mean, pretty bold statement. I sure, I'm not even sure if it's true. There's probably a psychedelia song I'm missing. Or one that I haven't listened to that's worse. But whenever I think of worst psychedelia song, that's the one I think of. Maybe I'm supposed to use the fire uh, power for that. Okay, I just need 500 more points. And get another few of those wizards. Um, so the song that I was talking about for being the worst psychedelia song of the 60s was called The Rain, The Park, and Other Things by The Cow Sills. And I think the reason why I thought it was the worst psychedelia song, I mean, first off, I guess I should say of the 60s because, I mean, if I included worst psychedelia song, like, past the 60s, then obviously it wouldn't, probably wouldn't even, it wouldn't even be close to the worst. I mean, there have been some really awful attempts in, like, the 70s and onward to recapture, like, 60s psychedelia. So it definitely wouldn't be the worst if I counted those. But of the 60s, I think it depends, because there are some songs that are worse if you count them as psychedelia. Like, I guess MacArthur Park is worse if you uh, count, it as, count it as a psychedelia song, which Wikipedia does. But I think the reasons why that song are, is bad doesn't really have to do with psychedelia, which is why I... Which is why I didn't really... Which is why I don't really say that it's the worst psychedelia song. So anyway, why is The Rain, The Park, and Other Things the worst psychedelia song of the 60s? Is it Why is it worse than, like, Dizzy by Tommy Rowe or Crimson and Clover by Tommy uh, James and the Shondells, which I have relentlessly shat on as being pretty awful, which they are. Why is it Why is it worse than Atlantis by Donovan? I mean, that song sucks. Well, I think the reason why it's the worst is because of how overbearing it is. Oh, thank God. Like, it's just too much. Like, the previous three songs I mentioned, I mean, first off, I think one aspect is that they were all big in 1969, which was sort of when, like, psychedelia as we know it, or psychedelic rock at least, was sort of, like, kind of fading. But 1967 was like the peak of it, and that's when the Cow Sills song got popular. I think, and, and yeah, I just think that The Rain, The Park, and Other Things is too much. Like, there's this really annoying siren, like, beeping siren. It's not really a siren, but a beeping noise that plays constantly throughout the entire song. It doesn't fit, like, they strum, like, the strings. It sounds like, I mean, what, what, what is it? Like, is it a harp? So, it kind of sounds like one, but they strum that thing way too, they sh like, the strings are way too cheesy, and they're way too much, they, they're too fast, um, the song sort of has, like, tries to have, like, an echo effect with, like, the other character, with, I mean, fucking characters, I've been talking about fiction too much, people singing, the other singers in the castle singing, and it, I guess, comes off like an echo effect, but it doesn't work. Mainly because, um... Fuck. Okay. Okay, we're done. Like, I guess that's the big picture. Like, the strings are just too much strings are too much, the beeping is too much, um, 
like there's too many unpleasant noises. It feels like a song that makes you car sick. Like, I guess, like, if there's ever a song that makes me feel car sick, that would be the one. Because of... Because of just too much. And that's really the way to explain it. I mean, if I had a script, I probably could go into a bit more depth of why it's bad. But right now, it's, I can just say it's overbearing, it's too much. The title is really bad. I mean, what... I mean, The Rain, The Park, and Other Things is not a good title. It feels like... I mean, who, who describes their day, like, at a rainy park like that? Like, it feels like something a child would say, like, The Rain, The Park, and Other Things. Like, like what are the other things? Is it, is, it, is it the girl that may or may not be real, depending on the song's lyrics? I mean, basically, the song's about a guy who meets a girl and in a park while it's raining, and then she, well, when the rain is, when it's done raining, she disappears, so the guy wonders if she was real or not. Um, that's, the, that's the basic crux of the song. Like, is the girl supposed to be the other things in the song? Like, I just, I just don't, I just don't get the title. It's, it's bad. I don't know why they named it that. All right. If I ever did, like, a more in-depth YouTube video, I think I could describe why I hate that song so much. But for now, it's you're just going to have to go through that basic explanation. Alright. And. That is the only use for that recorder in the entire game. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um... How long have we been recording? 47 minutes? Not even that long, compared to my other videos. That's it. Um, hopefully you all enjoyed the video, and see you next time when we beat the extremely hard part of the game, because the game gets a lot harder after this. All right, see you then.